In today's video, we're talking about the one thing that always gets fought over in my house, the stuffing. Hi everyone, this is James from Barbecue.com and welcome back to the fourth episode in this five part series on how to cook your Christmas dinner on the barbecue. A huge thank you to our sponsor for this series, Hillstown Farm Shop. They've provided all the meat for these cooks, including what we're using today. Uh, if you want to check them out, you can check the link in the description for their website and also all their social media. So today we're talking about the stuffing. Uh, this is a firm family favourite in my house, so much so we need to make two tins of it. As you might have seen in the turkey video, if you missed that, I'll put the link up here for it, but uh, I don't stuff my turkeys, we make the stuffing separate. So there's really two kinds of stuffing out there as well. There's uh, breadcrumb stuffing and there's sausage meat stuffing. Today we're doing sausage meat stuffing, but we have a few little things to throw in there that are going to take it to the next level. So the reason I don't do the stuffing inside the actual turkey is because filling that cavity full uh, stops airflow through the bird and it can really slow down your cook. You can do it that way, it hasn't done in the past, but any videos or anything I've looked at online, I've always recommended not doing it that way. So instead, we're making it in a loaf tin, like this. Uh, I would tend to make two of these on a Christmas day. We would have anywhere between maybe eight and 10 people around, um, but they love their stuffing, so I need a lot of it. But one of these large loaf tins would be enough for uh, an average family, but it's always great they have leftovers. I never serve at all, I always keep some back for Boxing Day. It's great in a sandwich. So before we jump into the actual cook, we'll take a quick rundown on what you'll need uh, ingredients wise. I'll also leave a full write up for this and step by step guide on the website which I'll leave the link in the description for. So the ingredients you will need are two pounds of good quality sausage meat, two large onions which I've finely diced, four cloves of garlic which I've removed the skins and finely minced, two tablespoons of fresh parsley, two tablespoons of sage, 50 grams of breadcrumbs, uh, 30 grams of pine nuts, 100 grams of dried apricots, which I have just diced up into sort of large chunks. You also need enough streaky bacon then to line your loaf tin, and then finally a little bit of salt and pepper to season. So as we said before, uh, Hillstown Farm Shop are providing all the meat for these cooks, uh, and today's no different. They provided me with their sausage meat. Uh, this is from their rare breed middle white pigs, and if you've never had sausage meat from uh, a good quality butcher's before compared to the supermarket stuff, there is a massive difference in flavour in it. So I highly suggest if you're doing this, don't go for the supermarket stuff. Go to your local butcher and get their sausage meat because it'll be a lot better. Okay, there really isn't much skill involved in the preparation of the stuffing meat. Uh, I have the stuffing here in a large bowl and really all you need to do is add in all the other ingredients. So we have our two large onions which are finely diced scatter them in. Then we go in with our 50 grams of breadcrumbs, our four cloves of minced garlic, and then this is our sage and parsley. So you can leave a little bit for uh, topping it with later on. Then the stars of the show are the pine nuts. Again we're going to keep a few of these to put on top. Uh, so we put the majority of them in and just leave a few behind to put on top later on. And then finally our apricots. So dried fruit's really a nice thing to add to your stuffing. Uh, it gives it that little burst of sweetness every now and again. Uh, especially going against them sort of strong sage and onion and garlic flavours. Um, so again add most of them. Keep a few back and we're going to top them with it later on. Just for presentation it's nice to have a few on top. In the fun bit, just stick a glove on and get in there and mix everything together. Okay, after that initial mix then we can give it a season with salt and pepper and that's it ready to go into the loaf tin. So we're using the smoky bray, uh, smoked sea salt and smoked pepper. So just give it a season with both. I like to go quite heavy on the pepper. Uh, Again, it's another nice flavour you want to see coming through. One final mix and then we'll get our tin ready and get the mixture added into it. Okay, I brought you in a little bit closer here with our loaf tin and we're going to get lined with the streaky bacon. 
so the way I like to do it, I don't fully encase the stuffing, um, so I will lay it across the bottom, bring it up over the edge, and the next strip crosses that. And just leave a small overhang at the edge, and these will fold back in once we add our meat. So just continue down the tray. So there we have it. The idea isn't to fully enclose the stuffing in the bag and it'll just wrap up around it and actually marks out the slices quite nicely. Um, so we've got a good base there um, whenever we're lifting out of the tin and then it comes up each side. Once we fill it then these will fold in over at the top and give us a nice uh, detail up the edge. Okay so here's our stuffing mixture. It's simply a matter of taking it and adding it into the tin press it down into the corners. I don't want to compact this too much, uh, but we do want it to form a nice loaf shape and it'll hold together a little bit better if it is firmed down in. So yeah, it's just about the perfect amount for this size of a tin. I wouldn't recommend cooking anything bigger than this, uh, so if you did find you needed more of it, as I said at the start, make two tins rather than making one large, because uh, it does take quite a while to cook, you know, you're probably looking at around an hour and a half to two hours, so it's better to make two small ones and that way it'll get to its target temperature a little bit quicker. So with that in, these ends of bacon then, uh, we're not going to fold them over tight, uh, we're actually going to put them over and just fold them back on themselves almost like the crimped edge of a pie. I mean, it still leaves the top open. So I'm not sure about anybody else, but my favorite part of a sausage stuffing meat is the gnarly crunchy bits that form on top. So that's why we like to leave it open. Uh, if you cover it over, then the stuffing's all gonna be soft. So finally then, we have our pine nuts and our apricots that we saved from earlier on. We can just sprinkle them on top, it gives a little bit of detail. And here are our dried apricots. I'm just cut into chunks, just sprinkle them on top for a little bit of colour. So we still have some of our herbs, so we're going to save them. If we put them on now, they'll just turn black. So we'll save them for uh, closer to the end, and then we can top it off. So that's it, ready to go on. Okay, as far as barbecue setup goes, we're going indirect cooking uh, at a temperature of around 180 degrees Celsius or somewhere in that range. Uh, if you need any tips on how to set up your barbecue for indirect cooking, I will put a link up here in the iCard and that will show you the different ways you can go. Today we're using the 50-50 split, so that's coals either side of the barbecue, leaving an area in the centre with no coals and that's where we're going to place our food. So we'll put this on and close the lid and let it do its thing. As I said, it's probably going to take around an hour and a half to cook, but we're going to keep an eye on it and monitor the internal temperatures using the thermopen. Once the temperature at the centre reaches 75 degrees C, you know it's ready to eat, so you can lift it off. of honesty and being truthful, which I am all about, the apricots burn. So I wouldn't put them on right at the start. Leave them until your temperature hits that sort of 70, 72 degrees. You've only got a few more degrees to go and then add them on top. Uh, they burn quite quickly, um, maybe within sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, they were uh, starting to go black, which I don't mind. I don't mind them being a little bit uh, charred on top, but 
definitely not burn. So I replaced them, picked them all off, and uh, done these about five minutes before I lifted it off the actual barbecue. So uh, just wanted to be honest. But as you can see, we've reached an internal temperature of 75 degrees C. Uh, the bacon's gone nice and crispy around the edges. It smells unreal. So once I knew it was ready and it hit that 75, that's whenever I put the, the herbs onto it. Uh, you don't want to put them on too early or they'll just sort of wilt and go black. Um, but put them on now, it gives them enough to warm up, uh, release their fragrance and their flavour. So it's super hot at the minute. Uh, if I try to get it out of this tray, I have no doubt I will burn myself. So let it chill out for 5-10 minutes before you try and remove it and then we'll get it sliced up. give it a try. It looks so good. It smells so good. Oh, the apricot inside, that's amazing. That's so sweet. Little pops of pine nut every now and again. If you're not a fan of garlic, the tail it back about it is very garlicky. I love garlic. So, Maybe go for two, three cloves if you don't mind. A little bit of garlic if you like a lot, throw another one in. But the apricots are the star of the show there. Doesn't matter how many you're cooking for, make two of them. Boxing day, these are perfect. Big chunky slices, I guess. If we're doing two bits of bread, that's all I need. Going again. So I didn't say before, the overall cook time was an hour and 20 minutes. Um, barbecue sat pretty steady, so the cook went fine, apart from burning the apricots. But just get a probe and measure it. Uh, it can be a hard thing to get a, a proper reading on, so measure it in a few places to make sure it's at 75 all the way through. Sometimes you might need to rotate it on the grill. So if you do want to give it a try, check out the recipe for it in the description and also thanks to Hillstown for providing the sausage meat and the bacon. We've made this a few times with lesser quality sausage meat and honestly the amount of fat that comes out of it, it ends up being all you taste and the stuffing ends up very greasy. Whereas this, there's still the right amount of fat content in it, it's still lovely and moist but it's not running out of it uh, and that comes from good quality sausage meat. So give it a try. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next episode.